Hey, hi, how are you? My name is Salt. Welcome back to Magic the Gathering Arena. We're still exploring the standard meta right now, trying to figure out what's good and what's not. It's slowly settling from my experience, but there's still uh, quite a few decks out there that I think are popping in and out of uh, popularity, and different variants of different decks are popping in and out of popularity. This is one that I have not seen anyone actually running, like I've not run the people running it on the ladder yet, but I've seen a few versions of it on different deck building websites as I was looking around for ideas for myself. So I built a slightly altered version. Uh, there is a much better way to build this deck, and it basically involves using double temporary lockdown and having a slightly better mana base than this. This mana base is a bit scuffed, uh, so I do apologize for that if, you, if you're if you crafting it. Fix the mana base at your own discretion. The reason it's a bit scuffed, though, is I'm trying to find as many basic land types as I can for Leyline Binding to make it easy to play. So the reasons that I'm playing stuff like Contaminated Aquifer and Sunlit Marsh is that they have basic land types on them allowing Leyline Binding to be played for much cheaper. It's the same reason that I have included Spar's Headquarters, even though this deck doesn't actually have green in it. This is mostly a black-white enchantments deck, but because we run blue, we can run Xur Eternal Schemer, which makes our enchantments be really, really big creatures with Hexproof, Death Touch, and Lifelink, meaning that we can have our Restoration of a Ganjo just have that by default when it's a creature. Heliod gets that by default when it's in a creature, and we can turn our Leyline Binding into a 6-6 beater. Uh, it's, it works pretty well in my experience. I've had some decent success with it so far, but let's really put it to the test and hop right into the queue with it. When it goes first, uh, probably Spar's headquarters into something so we can play Companion ASAP. I kind of want to get out Companion ASAP, though I do believe if we play headquarters into Marsh, this goes down to being a two cost, but we won't actually be able to play it. Rakdos, interesting. All right, well, if they're just going to be slow playing, we will just play our Spirited Companion out. Looks like they have burned to the face of some sort. I can't believe they're going to kill my poor doggo. What a cruel individual. Oh, Edict. Oh, thank you, opponent. This is wonderful. A lot of Rakdos decks are trying to play some variation of Anvil right now. So, uh... Kix's command is actually great here. Cut down pretty good because they're getting kind of slowed down and missing land drops, it seems. Professional Facebreaker, something that cut down hits very well. Um, I do kind of want to keep holding on to the Aganjo, but we will play our wedding announcement and hang out. Slowly work towards our Gix's command. Unfortunately, Gix's command does negatively impact my own board sometimes. Sure. Um... Rakdos will occasionally run board wipes, so I would rather draw cards here and work towards finding my Xur than make my board state go a little too wide and play into Rakdos shenanigans. Bye-bye, Shieldred. Uh, we don't have any enchantments now. Oh, we do! Heliod, get back my dog! Once again, just going to keep drawing cards, making stuff bigger, and profiting. I think filling out my board state with more wide variety of threats is a better play here. Especially now that we have Heliod. Heliod's a really, really powerful card. Fun fact, they had to discard that Hitali as a cost. Which is pretty cool if you ask me. And my opponent scoops it up because uh, they really needed that extra mana to probably play Breach the Multiverse. Which was my assumption, which is why we hard countered that out. They probably wanted to try and get to Breach next turn, and they didn't have a land in hand. So without knowing that they would guaranteed hit Breach, which, one, two, three, four, five, yeah. They wouldn't have hit Breach without the treasures. Like, wouldn't have guaranteed hit it. So they didn't know what was going to happen, other than they were about to get beat down for four, nine, nine total damage here. Because this is, because I would I would have flipped this guy and then been able to play out a bunch of stuff at flash speed. It would have been great. GG's. We're going first. I don't hate this hand. I think we keep it. If we get an untapped land, we'll be able to play Leyline Binding for very cheap. But I'm okay with it being a bit slow out the gate here. Leyline Binding costing two means we can play it on the next turn if we don't draw our third land, which will be nice. Uh, potentially Grixis of some sort. We did hit our next land, meaning we can just slam Restoration of a Ganjo here. Unless my opponent is playing counter magic. 
I'd be shocked. I don't feel like Grixis plays ba- Nope, I guess Grixis does play basic mountains nowadays, huh? Oh well, I guess we'll just have to play our next restoration of a Ganju out of our hand. Ooh, that's really rough for them. We're playing another restoration here because we don't want them to hit our wedding announcement or our ley line with the make disappear. We'd much rather them hit our mana ramp. Especially when if they ever tap out for something, we can play Heliod and then just get it back. As a um, as a bit of a combo play. Heliod works really well in the stack, especially when you're turning your enchantments into creatures, because he just gets them back when you play him. Unfortunately, most of my hand and uh, stuff is not really, like, playable with Restoration of Iganjo, but if we draw, like, a uh, tapped land, we can discard it to Iganjo and then get that back. My opponent is really mad that I'm ramping, it seems, because they're, like, for, I, they have to be holding up, like, a Shieldred's Edict or something, right? If we don't draw an extra land, though, we do just play this and then Wedding Announcement afterwards, most likely. It looks like my opponent's either molding that they missed a land drop or something. It's got to be Shieldred's Edict holding up uh, Pryo. Oh my lord, my poor opponent. Alright, what are they dropping? Where are we dropping? They dropped Shieldred. Um, yeah, we will discard this land. Just a mana ramp for funsies, really. Because we got an extra land to play. Uh, meaning that we can play Wedding Announcement while holding open uh, enough mana to deal with a Make Disappear. That's one of the weirdly nice things about Restoration of a Ganjo, if you're getting a bunch of, like, extra lands and stuff. If they try and make it disappear, we just don't care. The fun part is, we still have enough mana for Leyline Binding, so this is a really good play regardless. My opponent put an upkeep stop before the Wedding Announcement trigger. <laughs> For some unknown reason. Are they trying to pretend like they have something, or are they just playing on full control? If they're trying to pretend they have something, they're doing a real piss-poor job of it. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, if they end up playing stuff out with all of their open mana that they have, we'll be able to just slam Heliod, get back a resto, slam resto. Which will be pretty nice. Which we are slamming. Oh wait, no. We didn't get an untapped mana. That's my bad. Oh no, my Architect of Restoration. Guess I'll just have to, you know, go and get that back now. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, watching plays like that happen while you're going through a I don't know if I care. I mean, yeah, you can eat that. I don't know if I care. Do I? Let's go ahead and swing. Did they just check to see if I swung with my 1-1s? One -ones? No, I don't want to draw a card. I want to go wide. You get the flip if you want. Two blocks, one. We can now play stuff at instant speed, and when my opponent draws cards, my stuff gets even cheaper. Hence the one-costed Brotherhood's End, and two-costed Rest- No, I was gonna play another card! What are you doing? Get back here! You coward! You're making me sit through your I don't know if I want this to go through triggers, and you won't let me have my fun with flipped Heliod? You coward! I get it, though. They did flub really hard on lands. That is a really rough time for them. GG's opponent. Opponent goes first, tapped, untapped, companion. I'm feeling pretty good. We do have a slightly reduced in price leyline binding. It'll be reduced by three, but it won't be great for us. But overall, if we draw another one of our tri-lands, we'll be pretty pretty well off here. Depending on what they play next determines whether or not we start holding a make disappear. Well, Invasion of Gobicon does indeed answer this question of what do we play here. Um it's the inspiring overseer. We want them to we want to avoid letting them draw cards. Because if they just play this, we just cut it down. And then we can't technically play leyline binding, but we do have access to a make disappear. 
So if they just try and play their Sagarda, we just counter it. Deja vu. The thing I just said happened. I actually think I'm just going to hold back since I drew the land. And they're just holding on to removal over there. Like, I don't really think I need to care that much. I just need to hold back. They play an angel that causes me problems. I lay line binding it. That's an angel that causes me problems. Resto E. Ganjo. Lovely card. This does allow us to play our spirited companion and let it eat a eh? go for the throat. And then, depending on what my opponent does, we will discard a spirited companion, get another one back. Oh, really? Oh, I just get to play Heliod now. I just get to play Heliod and get that back now, because I believe that is still three cost reduced. Which is pretty nice. Oh god, yeah. We can do this. Discard this, and it makes it even cheaper. Yeah, I get it. You have a, you, you have a go for the throat. That literally doesn't affect me right now, opponent. I'm sorry. I believe that makes this a two cost. Say hi to Heliod. He's a pretty cool cat. And you don't have a choice. This trigger is gone. Say goodbye to your Steel Seraph now, buddy. Bye bye. And we'll go ahead and get working on the invasion of Gobicon. No reason not to swing. What are they going to do? Block with Lauren? <laughs> oh man, that'd be funny. Why are you blocking with Lauren? You're in a deck that doesn't have a lot of card draw. I, I know people think it's bad to let your opponent draw cards, but when you're in a deck that lacks card draw in general... Just leave the Lauren alive. Archangel of Wrath, he gads. I take two damage. Thank you. Not a great card, but we get the draw. They're out of mana, so they cannot go for the throat. Zah! You do, in fact, go burr, my friend. And all of my stuff is now hexproof, making it very hard for them to do absolutely anything to me at all. The only thing that's not hexproof is Zah. And, that, and I... Get to flip Invasion of Gobicon, which will, in fact, make Zer hexproof. And indestructible! Isn't it so great? This deck has really good built-in synergies like that. Like, Invasion of Gobicon is a card that seems strange off the rip until you start, like, paying attention to it, right? If I'm going to make them have the second removal spell. Oh, they don't. Uh, this. Because I want Heliod back. Actually, I can get both back, can't I? Spirit of Companion to draw a card. Swing. Ah, okay. Spoiler alert, it's already kind of been made into, like, a creature, so it's still a 7-7. Seven, seven. I hate to break it to you, opponent. That still says 7 power 7 toughness. You have another removal spell. Yep. Please tell me they block the Architect of Restoration. You can't script this stuff! Oh, my lord, opponent, no! And we play Wedding Announcement to draw some cards. Oh, man, you cannot script that type of stuff. That is so unfortunate for my opponent. I've been in their shoes before, and literally the only thoughts that go through your head are, HOW? <laughs> because it's just so unlikely. Like, of all the cards, you just happen to top deck the thing? Uh, we'll give one of these companions a thing. Show them how 
we greet our enemies. Actually, wait, hang on. Do I have lethal here? I have lethal, right? I don't know. I'm just going to assume that I do, and if I don't, I'm going to look silly. God, Heliod is such a good card! You really need to build a deck that can include him, but he is such a good card. I really love it. Such a powerful card, but it is just... It, it's easy to deal with, but it's powerful. Uh, you know, it's it's a 4-4 four, four for 4, so it's pretty standardized stat-wise, but it brings back enchantments. Which is just really nice in a deck that runs a ton of enchantments anyways. And a deck that turns them into creatures. But yeah, I think I had lethal there, because that's 6, 7, 8, 9. Oh, yeah, I had exaxes if I took that thing out. So yeah, GG's, angels. Opponent's going first, and I don't think we can keep this hand. Much better. We have an answer to if stuff is getting out of hand early now. Before, it was like a... Oh, this is going to be so wonderful. Decks that play Lunark Veteran, 9 times out of 10... Uh, Because easily fall the stuff, like temporary lockdown. They like to play a lot of stuff and go off really fast. I mean, I could be wrong. I could just be about to be, you know, a giant pile of egg on my face. Oh god, no. Oh, temporary lockdown is gonna hit so hard. We have double white, right? That's double white? Yeah, it is. Also, we just put away one of you, sir. Get back in my deck. I wonder if my opponent is playing around the idea that I'm playing board wipes. Just please play another creature. Darn. I just really wanted them to play one more creature so Temporary Lockdown would hit. Maybe they're just sitting on removal. No, Adeline. Boop snoot. I think we have to Temporary Lockdown now, even though I'm not happy about it. Just keep my life total high. I can't imagine they're running too much enchantment removal, but we'll find out, right? Steel Seraph. It's just a 3-3, three, three, so Zerg can just kind of infinitely block it. This is dangerous, but I really need to hit my land drops here. That was a lot more dangerous than I was anticipating. Shit. If I hit a if I hit an untapped source, I could have played Zer as well. And things would have started going really well for me. So they get to deal 8 damage to me? That's not the end of the world. Especially because Zer will start gaining me life. This is just like a one turn thing, right? Yeah, double strike until the end of turn. If we draw one more untapped source, I know I've said that a lot, but we'll be able to play Zer and Leyline Binding, which will be pretty good. That's fine, we'll just play a Leyline Binding. I didn't want to do this, but we don't really have a choice. I wonder if they have a destroy evil. We'll find out. Doesn't look like it immediately. They do have a Phyrexian Vindicator, but that's fine. That doesn't bother me. Dang it, not untapped. But it does make it one cheaper. Say hi to Zer. He does, in fact, make things go burr. And say goodbye to your Vindicator. We do have the Heliod in hand here, which is really nice. If for nothing else, then uh, Heliod can get back one of these if it gets removed by a destroy evil of some sort. This little doggo is going to carry me to victory. Just you wait. Phyrexian Vindicator again. Man, sometimes you just don't win, huh? I mean, it can't really attack in, though, can it? Okay. <laughs> you need to do that on end step, buddy. If they ever attack in with that thing, we are, uh... You're sitting pretty. Oh, Vigilance, darn. I mean, we can block it. Eh, there's no reason.
They can only do it to one of them. Oh! Thanks for all the life? I guess. That was confusing. Yes! Oh, deck, you don't let me down ever. Uh, that's only 10 damage, though, so... Don't know if I care. This is one of those I just need as much life as humanly possible to survive into what is clearly an aggro deck. Uh... I could turn more stuff into creatures, but I'm worried about removals. I'm very worried about all of the removals, which is why I'm just kind of holding back and waiting. I want to be able to sack that. <laughs> they flubbed that game. They gave it away. Uh, I'm not going to lie. I don't know why they didn't block my Leyline Bindings. Does, uh, like, unless I am mistaken? The damage being prevented means that the Phyrexian Vindicator wouldn't technically die to death touch because you need to deal damage. Yeah, any amount of damage from a source of death touch is enough to destroy it. Which I think they should, if they had just blocked with that, sure, they, they could have like blown up Zera as a result of that. And I would have lost my lifelink and not been able to make that huge comeback. Uh, I mean, I would have eventually gotten another Leyline Binding, but I would have been down one Zer. I don't know, I feel like they really misplayed the end there, but I will gladly take it. GG's. Oh my goodness, I get to go first. Keep Spirit Companion on two. No seal from existence on three. But if we draw a white source off of Companion, uh, we have the potential. Otherwise, I think we actually hold back on Zer. I feel like Zer doesn't need to land for quite a bit. Double white for seal from existence, I am very happy. Especially considering they just revealed a copper coat vanguard. Meaning that something like seal from existence to hit, I don't know, one of these copper coat vanguards. Might be pretty good. I feel like I don't need to hit it yet though, and I think them maybe having a... Uh, a Thalia or something, or like a Valiant Veteran to hit, might be better. Okay, the Gixxas Command's making me feel much better here, so I will go ahead and take it out. Gixxas Command, and I've taken out two of their Anthem effects, means a lot of their stuff is going to stay lower power. Yeah, that's fine. Alright. The Salty Yorgo followed by a Scoop. Hey man, I was literally going through my turn as fast as possible. GG's, I guess. Uh, opponent goes first. We don't hate this. Hmm, do we take the damages here? Do we... I think we work towards the Leyline Binding more than anything. Just the Phoenix check? I'm very confused. Uh, we don't really care about playing the Companion on Curve here, so we'll just vibe. Cut it down, just generally be a good card for a lot of these matchups. Especially right now, when my opponent is just doing that. We can Leyline Binding away that now. Or Leyline Binding away something else. I think probably hitting the Mechanized Warfare. Especially when they just play a second one, it's probably one of the better decisions we could have. I don't know why they're just like going, nice! Nice. Nice shot. Like, I get it. You're salty. You didn't get to just say, Oh, Mono Red, go burr! And then just do the thing. But, like, come on. People play counter magic, my guy. Calm down. We're gonna cycle this away. Hmm? Never mind. We're going to exile a Phoenix check. This is super worthwhile because uh, it gains me life. I wonder if they have a strangle or something, that's why they're holding priority. 
This is what you get for hurting my people. Hmm, second maiden monastery swift spear. Doggo? Draw a card. Gix's command, lovely. Pump Doggo a little bit, so it's more Remember annoying to my opponent. Training. Wedding announcement, profit. You can play Gix's command after this. Yep, Gix's command will be perfect after this. Do they do the smart play? Oh, they just have a strangle. Oh, I totally called the strangle. Oh well. I guess that's uh, do we let them have a turn like this? I think we have no reason not to double block running, uh... We run Heliod, so... And I think we just kind of hold on to a Gix's command here. We will sw we'll basically let them swing in or not swing in. And we can make our decisions based off that. It's looking pretty good for us, though. Yeah, if they're just, like, main phasing Lightning Strike like that, that bodes well. Yeah, okay. Mad dash attack in. Boop. And boop. Everything attacked so we get to draw cards. We play Doggo so we have an on-ground board presence. Leyline binding is wunderbar. And we are cooking. Another Wandering Emperor is amazing. My opponent needs lots of ways to get rid of my life total. They're going to be really upset about this one. I am now gaining 9 life a turn with stuff that cannot be targeted by your spells. How you doing, bud? You doing good over there? Fun fact, we have another Leyline Binding in hand, but they don't know that yet. This is where this deck really, really shines. Uh, that literally only kills my Spirited Companion, right? I could have technically done this in response, but I'm just here to prove a point. Oh, they're just conceding. Yeah, okay, I, was, I have a lethal on board anyways. <laughs> yeah, that's where Zer really shines. If you're allowed to live to the point that you can animate a Leyline Binding, you will slap just about every deck out there that plays any form of aggro plan. GG's Mono Red. You saw how the deck performed. I believe we went either 6-3 and three or 6-2 and two across the course of all of the games that I played for the video. I didn't put in the games that I lost against enchantments because I'm not going to lie, playing against Selesnya enchantments is probably one of the most tear-inducing, boredom-inducing things on the planet for me at the moment. And that's because the decklist has added uh, one card since Kamigawa. So I just like, I just kind of zone out because it does the same thing over and over again. But that is a matchup for you to watch out for. Uh, unless you can get Gix's Command rolling early or Leyline Binding the important pieces or temporary lockdown at the exact moment they start going wide with their Hollowed Hauntings, you're going to be in big trouble. Uh, I might, if you're going to play this in best of three, absolutely throw Farewell and Sunfall in the sideboard. Absolutely. Uh, as well as Depopulate, potentially. You don't really want to use them, but playing into Selesnya Enchantments, you don't really have a choice a lot of the time. They will go wider than you and eventually go bigger than you if they are still running Hollowed Haunting in their deck list. That is something to watch out for. Obviously, you know, your discretion if you think that Farewell's bad because you depend on enchantments so much. That's fine, you know, you do you. It's just something that I noticed while playing this deck. Otherwise, I think the deck performs very, very well. I think it does well into a lot of matchups right now. I think it has enough mid rangey tempo plays to kind of get going and get big and start the beat down, and has enough controlling elements to hang out with some of the other mid range decks. I think it might fall off into control matchups, but because it grinds value so goddamn well, using Heliod to get back some of the expensive enchantments that you want to play. I feel like overall this deck is pretty strong. I would tailor the mana base a bit more than what I have. This is just a burst rough draft. But a lot of the rest of the cards are really good. Definitely do two temporary lockdowns in place of one in a seal from existence. I just don't have two of these. But that's the deck. That's the video. Thanks for hanging out and watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and all that stuff. And I hope to catch you in the next one.